Hey Freedom Youth, this is James. Sorry that we're not meeting up this month, but I got a great message for you today. Got a question for you. Have you ever ran away from something and then try to hide it from your parents? Well, I got a great story for you about me when I was a teenager. There's also a really great story in the Bible about a great king that he tried to hide something, but God knew. Hey Freedom Youth, so I told you I was going to tell you a story about me when I was a teenager, so here it is. So when I was about 13 years old, my mom and dad bought me a BB gun. And they told me that I could go, you know, shoot cans, shoot targets, but don't shoot animals. Due to the fact that shooting an animal, if you kill it, you, you know, going to eat it. So I told, you know, I said, oh, I'm not going to shoot any animals, no birds, no nothing. So one day I was outside shooting some cans off of a pole in a far distance, about 50 feet away. And then all of a sudden a bird comes flying and comes up on top of a telephone pole. Well, I got this bright idea. I'm going to shoot at it. BB gun wasn't that accurate, so I'm like, eh, I won't hit it. Well, I took aim, shot it, and lo and behold, I hit the bird. It flew down and hit the ground. So I ran over to it thinking like, oh, you know, I shot a blackbird. Well, find out it was somebody's pet bird that got out. Yeah, I shot this. And all this time, my mom was watching me in the kitchen window and was laughing because she's seen what I was doing but me I'm like oh my gosh I did something that my parents told me not to do so I started to freak out what do I do what do I do with this bird how can I hide this bird how can I you know get rid of it well we lived about a half a mile from a creek so my youth teenager ideal was like I'm gonna go throw it in the creek so I ran down to the creek. While I was running down, my mom was laughing at me because I was literally holding the bird like this, running down to the creek. I threw it in the creek. To me, that was like, okay, it's done. No more. Nobody's going to know anything about it. Well, my mom at the time called my dad and told my dad what happened. So, yeah, my parents knew. Well, later that evening, when we were having dinner, my dad brought up, hmm, I'm driving home from work, and all of a sudden, I seen a bird floating in the creek. 
and I just paused, and I'm like, oh, no. And my dad kind of joked about it. He's like, yeah, I didn't think birds would float in creeks, but I guess he wanted to swim. Well, I knew right then and there I was had. So I confessed to my mom and dad, yes, I shot a bird. And they were like, well, we know, we told you not to shoot a bird. So I lost my privilege to the gun for a week. But I learned a lesson. Don't disobey your parents and don't shoot birds when you're not supposed to. Okay, okay, I will admit, I was not the perfect teenager when I was younger. So let's go ahead and move on to our story in the Bible that you can find in 2 Samuel chapter 11 through 12. It is about King David and what he tried to do to run away from sin and hide it. And this is going to be told by my wife, Danielle. So... I hope you enjoy, and here she is. During the spring, at a time when most kings head off to war, King David told Joab to go to battle with his men, as well as the entire army of Israel. They wiped out the Ammonites and also besieged Rabbah while the king stayed in Jerusalem. One evening, when David was walking on the roof of his palace, he noticed a beautiful woman bathing. He then sent a man out to learn more about her. When the man returned, he told David that the woman was named Bathsheba and that she was Eliam's daughter as well as Uriah's wife. David sent some messengers to bring her to him. She went to David and slept with him. Then Bathsheba returned home. Later, she sent word to the king that she was pregnant. The king had Joab send Uriah the Hittite to him. When he arrived, the king asked him how the war was going and then told him to go home. Uriah left, but he did not go home. Instead, he slept on the palace entrance. When David found out, he asked him why he had not gone home. Uriah told him that as long as Judah, Israel, and the ark were staying in tents, that he could not go home to eat or to sleep with his wife. Then David gave Uriah a letter he had written, and he told him to give it to Joab. In the letter, David told Joab to put Uriah in the very front of the fiercest fighting and then to pull away from him so Uriah would be killed. Joab did this and Uriah died in battle. Joab sent a messenger to tell David that Uriah was dead. When Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, learned that her husband had died, she mourned him. When the mourning period was over, King David had Bathsheba brought to him. She married David and had his son. But what David had accomplished displeased God. So now we're in 2 Samuel chapter 12, and this finds Nathan the prophet rebuking David who has sinned. So God sends Nathan in to see David, and Nathan tells him a parable. In the parable, one man is very rich and has much livestock, while a poor man has very little and only one ewe, which he treats more like his one of his children. But when the traveler comes to stay with the rich man, the rich man refuses to take one of his sheep or his cows to feed him. But he takes the poor man's ewe instead. When David hears the story, he is full of righteous anger, not realizing that it applies to him. He says the man who stole the poor man's ewe does not deserve to live. Nathan then reveals to David that the story is actually about him. Then he reminds David that the Lord made him king and kept Saul, the old king, from killing him. Now David has Saul, Saul's house, his wives, his kingdom, and the Lord would have given him even more than this, but he sinned. Nathan reminds David that he had the Hittite commander Uriah killed by the Ammonites so he could take his wife. Because of this, David's house will always be in turmoil. David repents, and Nathan tells him that he is not going to die, but the son born to him in Bathsheba will die because of David's sin. Sure enough, the child sickens and dies despite David's pleading and fasting. David's servants are even afraid to tell him about the child's death. But David seems to take the death more calmly than the servants would have thought. He tells the servants that his fasting will not help the child now. After this, David and Bathsheba have another child, whom they named Solomon. 
God loves this child and tells Nathan to have the child named Jedediah. Wow, what a great message. And whether you are a, an adulterer or a liar, to God, sin is sin. But I got some great news. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He is our great Redeemer. So let us bow our heads and pray. God, thank you for this message and thank you for everything you've done. I pray that anyone who hears this message will find Jesus and know who he is. We love you and we give thanks to you. In Christ's name, amen. Now, if you don't know who Jesus is and would like to find more about who he is, then you can visit us on our Facebook page at Freedom Church of the Black Hills. And there where you can get connected with us. We also have a web page that you can go to at www.freedomchurchbh.com. There you can find more resources and you can also connect with one of our pastors. At Freedom Church of the Black Hills, we live boldly and free because Christ came and set us free. Always remember, love God, love people, and love community. Until next month, bye!